In 2020, we've all been asked to do more with what we already have. If you have IBM Content Services, you'll be glad to know there's a lot you can do. In this short video, we'll talk about role-based redaction of sensitive personal information. And to tell you what it is and why it matters is Senior Offering Manager Neil Parrott. So before we talk about role-based redaction, it's important to understand, you know, our duty to protect content. Um, most of the content stored in your FileNet and CMOD and uh, IBM Content Manager systems is, is really important uh, content that you use to run your business. Uh, and a lot of you have vast amounts of uh, this content that you have to maintain and protect. Um, and we all have heard of some really high profile security breaches. Um, you know, they're usually in the news pretty much every week. I think there was one yesterday. But Google, um, you know, eBay, Craigslist, all these entities that we interact with and that have information about us have had security breaches uh, that have pretty much touched us all at least once. Um, and this has led to the evolving and creation of various privacy laws around the globe. And we'll talk about some of what they are in a moment. Uh, but the purpose of these laws is to protect people like you and I, uh, if and more importantly, when things go wrong. So broadly speaking, these laws um, cover personal data uh, that falls into two categories. Uh, so those categories are on the screen here. We have personally identifiable information, PII. This covers things like you know, names, social security numbers, and other pieces of information that can be used to directly identify an individual. Um, important to note that the, um, the European General Data Protection Regulation, which is now law, um, expands the definition of PII to include things like email addresses and IP addresses. So that's a fairly recent addition. <clears throat> The other category is sensitive personal information. So this is slightly different. It's, it's important information that, although it doesn't directly identify an individual, it's usually related to an individual and therefore it should be kept private. So the point about SPI is that um, this information, if it gets out inadvertently, it could potentially harm an individual should it be made public. So these are the two focuses of various privacy laws. Um, I've mentioned the General Data Protection Regulation, uh, which became law a couple of years ago in the May timeframe. And there are other similar privacy laws that exist. Uh, a recent one is the California Consumer Privacy Act. And then Brazil has its own version of GDPR. And I'm going to try and say it's Legeral de Protecio de Deiros, LGPD. I probably really messed that up. Uh, and then we've got Singapore's personal Data Protection Act, and there are many others. So the important point to take from this chart is it's all of our duty to protect content, but, but there can be significant penalties and consequences if you don't protect content. For instance, GDPR requires that companies who do have a data breach must report that within a 72 hour window. And if you don't, then you're in trouble. You, you're liable to fines that can be quite significant. So this is the importance of protecting content. So, well, what can we do about it? Um, this feature, role-based redaction, is an evolution of basic redaction that's been available for many years. And in fact, role-based redaction has been available since, if I recall, around the end of uh, 2016, I think is when we introduced this. But it's a really neat feature, a very powerful capability, and it allows you to comply with the regulations that require you to limit access to the PII or sensitive personal information that I mentioned earlier. So what is redaction and how can it help? So a redaction is simply a, a long way, a long worded way of saying hide areas of a page, obliterate them so that they can't be viewed. And we do this by applying graphical annotation boxes. It's that simple. Um, they can be any color you want. You can see various examples of annotation boxes on the right hand side of this screen, purple, green, yellow, blue, etc. cetera. Um, so that's all well and good. You're just literally covering up sensitive content. So with Fanlet Content Manager, um, what we did was we evolved this redaction capability 
to say, you know, it can be tedious to manually redact lots of documents in lots of different ways. You know, one user might have a different need to access information than another. Someone in, e in HR might need to see the social security number, but may not need to see the bank account number. So it would be good if we could have one document of record, but then hide various pieces of information by redacting that document in different ways, depending on who is accessing the document. So that's what role-based redaction does. It does on-the-fly redaction of documents at the point of retrieval. And therefore, it avoids unnecessary exposure of that sensitive data within the document to users who don't have a need to see it. So as I mentioned, the really cool thing about this feature is you only need one copy of the document, one master copy. So that's important because depending on who you're serving, which user you're serving, you may have to redact that document in different ways. Um, so again, HR could have different redaction requirements to someone in finance, for instance. Um, and the way this works is that, um, as I say, redactions are burnt in on the fly at the point of access. And this burn-in stays with the document from the, from the point of view of viewing the document, downloading the document, printing it, should you need to print it, or forwarding it by email as an attachment, for example. So the way you can create these redactions, you can do them manually if you don't have too many to do. Uh, you can use the Deja Virtual Viewer to manually create redactions. Uh, and then when you're creating the redactions, as we'll see in a minute, you associate those redactions with reason codes, and this allows you to align them with the user roles that are accessing the documents so that they get the right redactions applied at the point of retrieval. So that's one way you can do it manually, or you can use Data Cap Insight Edition uh, to auto discover and redact the data automatically and, and, and apply the reason codes. So as I said, this feature has been available as part of Pharmac Content Manager since you know, the end of 2016. So let's, uh, let's take a quick look at a demo here to see how this works. And this is really a quick demo, um, very quick, and, it, and it's a little old. You might, you know, those of you more eagle-eyed might spot a very old date here, but it, fit, you know, it works the same now as it did then. So let's start this rolling. So I'm logged in as a privileged administrative user. So I have the power and responsibility to create redactions. We're opening up a W4 document here. And you can see, um, let's see if I can make this a little clearer. Um, oh, no, it's not going to work. Yes, or is it? Uh, yeah, I've got the laser here. So on the right-hand side of the screen, I'm kind of hovering over here. There's a social security number, which is on full display. So those of you within North America know that a social security number is a really important piece of information. You do not want that shared unnecessarily with anyone. So, you know, companies that have content that includes social security numbers really have to take care that they're only sharing that data with people who absolutely have a need to know. So that's the social security number. So what I'm going to do as a privileged user, I can set up a redaction. <clears throat> so there's a social security number. I go to the left panel, and this is an old view of Deja. Uh, we've got a new uh, look and feel to this now. And I've set up a redaction, and I'm going to set it a reason, a redaction reason code. So now that redaction has been set. I can save it with the image. And now I'm going to toggle it just to check that it works OK. So I can toggle it on and off. Now, a regular user wouldn't be able to do that. They wouldn't have that privilege. So now I'm going to log out as the admin user. I'm going to come back in as Christine. We're going to meet Christine again later in this session. But for now, she's looking at this W4. And lo and behold, Christine does not have access to the social security number. It's completely hidden. She doesn't have the ability to toggle it on or off either. So that's just an example, a quick example of where we, you know, we had one admin user set up a redaction, and then a regular user um, uh, was, was viewing the document and they just don't have access to that social, social security number. Now, Christine could print this out. They could send this on as a copy. Um, whatever, whatever they do to the document, that will be hidden, burnt in forever on their copy of the document. Someone else looking at this document, uh, say in HR, 
um, they would see the uh, the SSN. You know, that social security number would be visible to them. But again, it's all working off one single document at the back end. We're not having to uh, create multiple document copies. So in summary, role-based redaction allows you to easily protect content, documents that is, containing personal information and sensitive personal information using redactions based on user roles and the need to know. The redactions are burnt in at the point of user retrieval and remain with the document, for example, when printed or sent as an email attachment, and no additional document copies are required, and this helps to minimize both your document volumes and storage requirements. Okay, so that's, um, that's redactions.